you got to know who you are. If you don't slow down enough to find out who you are as a person, you end up kind of taking this path that is predetermined. So slowing down, number one, and find out, like, what do you actually like? Like, who are you as a person? I use this analogy of bow and arrow, right? You can only go as far as you pull back. So the further you pull back on that arrow, the further it goes and further you go. So do a lot of deep diving, going back and talking to my parents, finding out who I was. And that was like step one. And once I started finding that out, I was able to start to see, okay, my skill sets or my gifts, my abilities line up into these areas. And then the career path, if you would, started to make more sense. Just evolving, growing and knowing, wisdom is flowing. If you didn't know, now you know where I'm Welcome going. to another episode of the No Degree Podcast. I want to personally thank you for tuning in and supporting our show. If you haven't yet, hit that follow or subscribe button. I encourage you, don't keep this to yourself. Share these inspiring stories with your friends, invite them to subscribe, and connect with us on social media. So today's guest is Michael Hale Jr. What do you do, Michael? Man, uh, that is always an all-encompassing question. But I'm the uh, Detroit market leader for Tech Elevator. So basically, I transform lives. That's what I tell people. Now, how do you how do you go about transforming lives? That's a bold statement, but I know you do it. I know, right? I know. So basically, my role is to help people through our coding boot camp. They enter our coding boot camp. They start taking the technical classes and the courses to get them, you know, into the rhythm of becoming a software developer. While they're doing that, they meet with somebody like me. There's a whole bunch of me's all over the country, but I mean, it's only one me, but you know what I mean? But what we do is we, we get them into a session and we just kind of get their ideas of what they want to do as far as their career. So uh, where do they want to work? What kind of company do they want to be a part of? You know, small or big? Do they want to do front? in development, full stack back in, and then uh, help them find those opportunities. So I'm out in the community building relationships with people, finding out, you know, ins and outs of jobs and what are some of the needs and what's what kind of fit are they looking for? And then I have to go back and say, I think this person fits really well and then put them into the role and get them into the the career field that they've been trying to get into. You've obviously done a lot to become successful. Yep. If you could create a blueprint of your success to pass on to someone without a college degree, what would it look like? What would they do? What should they avoid? Yeah. The first thing is like, you, you got to know who you are. You know what I mean? Like, if you don't slow down enough to find out who you are as a person, you end up kind of taking this path that is preset or predetermined. So slowing down, number one, and find out like, what do you actually like? Like, who are you as a person? Like, for me, I had to kind of like go backwards. So I, I use this analogy of bow and arrow, right? You can only go as far as you pull back. So the further you pull back Ooh. on that arrow, the further it goes and further you go. So do a lot of deep diving, going back and talking to my parents, finding out who I was. And that was like step one. And once I started finding that out, I was able to start to see, okay, my skill sets or my gifts, my abilities line up into these areas. And then the career path, if you would, started to make more sense. So I would say first find yourself, you know, and then find the area that suits your abilities and your skills. Wow. I love that because so many people, they just think about, I got to move next. I got to move forward. I got to do this. I got to do that. But yep. I ask them, like, why do you want to go in that direction? And they don't have a reason why. Someone told them, their parents, social media. Yeah. And so it's like, that's where you think. You should go, but that's not where you really want to go. You did not sit down to do yep. those things. So now let's talk a little bit about salary. Like how yeah. much would someone like you make? So typically uh, in this role, you're making somewhere between 80 and 100, right? Uh, depending upon your skill set, your history, and then, you know, can you get the, the job done, right? But somewhere in between there. Okay. And that's a very respectable salary. And then on top of that, you do meaningful work. Like you're changing the yeah. lives of of yeah. these people. Yeah. And some of them end up making more than you, which is even cooler. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's the, for me, that's the goal. Like I look at it like, yo, like, let me put you on so that you can go do what you're supposed to do. Right. You're supposed to make more than me. And sometimes I feel like we get caught up in that too. Like start feeling type funny type, like, oh, you making more than me. You supposed to go, you a software developer. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to put you into the system. And I think that's really important because like I've worked with people and they made more than me. And it's like, that's how I know I'm good at my job because <laughs> if I help people find jobs and none of them made more than me, then 
I'm not truly helping them. Some people have more skill sets. Some people have a specific skill set that pays more. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So now let's take it back. How was high school life for you? And what do you want to be in high school? High school, man, quit playing. You, you're dating me a little bit. <laughs> but uh, high school life was was crazy. It was like hectic in a sense because I was a I was an athlete, if you would. So I liked playing sports. I played basketball, played track and field, cross country. Uh, anything I can get my hands on, I did it. And so I was always like, you know, after school, working, doing my thing, playing with some of the cool kids. And so, but as I started to progress in high school, my brother, my, the cool story about it is my brother actually like went to the school that I went to and then he came back to be a teacher. And so I had a lot of perks because people like my brother. So I don't know. I got along pretty well. Nobody really messed with me. Not really. I don't think I ever got to a fight in high school or nothing like that. Uh, but I was the guy that, you know, people wanted to be around because I was funny, I feel like, you know, more so than anything. And uh, I fit right in. So high school was a breeze for the most part. So what would you want to be in high school? I think I wanted to be an engineer, actually. Like, so that was one of my goals was like engineering, all that kind of stuff. But then, like, I started realizing how much math it took to be an engineer. Now, here's the thing. I actually was good at math, should I say. So I probably would have been OK, but I don't know. Once we got the calculus, I was like, yeah, never mind. Let's. Let's figure something else out. Did you hold any jobs during high school? What was your first job? Who first job was working at Myers. So uh, I worked at Myers. I was 16 years old working at Myers, like a brand new Myers here, like in, in Livonia. And uh, I think it was a bagger. So it's funny, like talking about all these new job descriptions, right? Back then it was like, yeah, you're a bagger. But then it was like, all right, we'll go get the carts. All right, we'll go clean the bathroom. All right, we'll go mop the floor. I'm like, yo, like, it's not my job. So uh, it, it was pretty crazy. I ended up getting fired from that job. That was like my first job and my first fire all at once. It was. Why'd you get fired? You got to share that story. Man, we was wild. All right. So me and my. <laughs> So me and my cousin end up getting a job together. And I mean, did we do our job? Eh, sometimes for the most part. I mean, there was sometimes, you know, I'll come in and be like, yeah, I don't want to be here. So I would just leave because I feel like, you know, who cares? I'll go watch a movie. The movie theater was down the street. And then I would go home and act like I had been at work all day. So, uh, you know, it was a lot of reasons why I ended up getting fired. But that was probably uh, a lot of it. Hey, look, we're young. We learn. <laughs> So now, like you finish high school, what what yeah. happened next? So after after high school, I was I was really foggy. Uh, I didn't know what I necessarily wanted to do. A hundred percent. Um, you know the the road w that was paid for me was college, right? So like, go to college. What are you gonna do? So I started looking at community colleges because I don't know. I wasn't really fully committed to the idea of going to university, and I didn't have any acceptance letters because I really wasn't applying heavy like that. So. I ended up convincing my parents to allow me to go down to Florida to community college, uh, which was a bit of a disaster. Right. But uh, at the same time, it worked out great. In, in other regards, I met a lot of cool people. I learned what not to do. Uh, and I actually didn't do that bad in school. So I don't know. They, they made me come back home eventually. But uh, that's because I, I messed up in one class. But yeah, yeah that, was, so, that was rough. So what are the things you're not supposed to do? When I'm down there in Florida, uh, well, actually, like, not drink all day and then, like, not go to class and then, like, not show up six times in a row. Like, I don't know, man, just, like, not hanging with people who you know don't care about school, not going to everyday party possible. So it was a little crazy. I was in Orlando, but, you know, I, I often was in Miami or Fort Lauderdale because yeah. my friends were, they were like, yo, we going down here? And I'm like, all right, well, me too. So... A lot of uh, a lot of fun times. What happened next? You came back. Came back home. Um, man, was just kind of lost for a few years. I was probably like 20, 21. Didn't really know what I wanted to do next. Started looking at community college and up here so I could like finish. So enrolled in another community college up here at Wayne, Wayne, uh, Wayne County Community College. Shout out to WCC. But I uh, started doing some classes there. My brother, this is kind of when I started getting into the entrepreneurship kind of thing. My brother had a couple businesses and he was like, yo, like, why don't you come work with me? And uh, we used to sell candles and oils and fragrances and stuff in the mall. Those little kiosks you see, like back in the day, it was popping, right? So we were we were the guys in the mall, like selling that stuff. And it, it got really fun for me. And I started figuring out, like, I kind of wanted to go that route. But uh, yeah, things things got a little dicey in the midst of that, too. But still, we, we made it. Now, looking back, right? 
Yeah. What were some of the things that you would have done differently with the knowledge that you have now during that time frame? I would have put the right people around me sooner, right? I think that is key. A lot of times we just kind of, we pick people or we think, oh, I grew up with this person, so I'm, you know, remain loyal to the soil and roll with them. But like, the truth is, I should have had some people in my life who could have told me directions I needed to go in because now I'm understanding is it's not the how you're getting there. It's the who, who can help you get there. So now for me, looking, looking back, I'm like, yeah, I should have put a different circle around me for sure. Yeah, no, that's important to learn. Um, Cause even if that circle, they don't have to be like super high achievers, but they just right. have to have some direction. They just have to be like supportive and yeah. not, you know, sort of stay out of trouble. Now your brother's business, what was the next big move that you made? Man, I, I it was like about a few years and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Right. So I started doing um, just in and out jobs. Right. Just like taking different jobs. I ended up like stumbling into a job at Best Buy. Uh, actually, no, I take that back. Rewind before Best Buy, because that was a crazy experience. I ended up stumbling into a plant job because the plant I'm from Detroit, right? So, you know, Detroit born and raised. We're big into the plant, Motor City. So if you make it into the plant, like you're supposedly going to be like rich. Like, I don't know. It, yeah. It's it's a whole mindset here. So I ended up working at the plant for like a year, right? And while I was there, man, like I hated it. Like, <laughs> like I hated every minute of it. I knew people that were like loving it. My so my family, you know, is uh, really, really deep into the big three, the auto scene. So my dad, yeah. you know, retired from Chrysler. My uncle just retired from Chrysler. And, you know, I was just telling them, like, Yo, I, I don't know if I can do this. And so uh, I was making good money and I was still going to school and all that kind of stuff. But like I, my body was hurting, man, every single day. Like I had to do these crazy jobs where you like putting in brake pedals and you swinging outside of a car. Yeah. And your butt's hurting because you're sitting on a metal car, like, and you're doing that 500 times a day for like a year straight. It just like sucked the soul out of me. So like, I ended up, uh, I actually ended up quitting. Like, I turned in my resignation letter to uh, my boss at the time, and people thought I was, they thought I was insane, like literally, because the move was, hey, I don't want to do this anymore. I think I can use my mind to actually get somewhere. And so I met this guy who was an owner of like five Tim Hortons. He went to my church yeah. and I was like, yo, like, I think I can come over there and learn the game. And he's like, all right, you know, like, I want to teach you. And he brought me in and I left to go work at Tim Hortons. Like, it was, it was a crazy time. Okay. So how was Tim Hortons? Tim Hortons was, was, um, man, a lot. Uh, so. I was just, I started out like from the ground, like, because he, he was like, yo, I want you to run these eventually him and his son, they were running them. And so his son basically like mentored me and showed me every single thing from like how to take out the trash properly, how to sweep the parking lot, how to make coffee, how to run the register, how to run the drive through, how to make the orders and, and, you know, send the cash to the bank, all this crazy stuff, how to even bake. Like, so I do know how to bake some donuts, uh, if needed, but I don't, I don't choose to. But it was it was a wild time, man, because it was rapid transformation. I was learning the system. And before I knew it, I think maybe like five to six months in, the owner was like, yo, meet me at the store downtown Detroit, which was called uh, CompuWare at the time. And so I'm like, all right, fine. So 530, I get there. We walk in. He's showing me the store. I'm kind of like, mm, all right, cool. And he's like, all right, man, well. Have a good day. This is on you now. And he just leaves. Like he leaves me with like a brand new staff I've never met before. Like they've never met me. He's like, this is your manager now. And he leaves the store. And then like the eight o'clock rush is getting ready to come in. And I'm just sitting there like, yo, this is absolutely nuts. And uh, we got through it though. You know, I had one of my guys, his name was Paris. He was like the OG there. And he was like, nah, man, I'm going to show you how we do it here. And and he walked me through it, and he uh, he taught me how to be a leader there, man. And so uh, I was there for a few years, and and it was it was good, man. I ended up taking over two locations, uh, both of them downtown. So needless to say, I grew immensely while I was there. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize like the retail fast food environment. It's not easy. It's brutal, and you learn a lot. Yeah, yeah, you learn a lot. Like I, I mean, I was I was kind of, like literally I was doing project management. 
right? Because people were placing orders. This is when Rocket Mortgage first came to town. So this is like 2009, 2010. Yeah. Like, so they calling in, making crazy orders, like thousand donuts, you know, by tomorrow. We want this. We want that. So you got that going on. You're learning time management because you have to manage not only my time, but I have to manage everybody else's time that works under me. So once you get to two stores, that's, you know, easily over 20 people. So like you're learning all these things on a day to day basis and you're not real. I wasn't realizing that it was creating all these transferable skills that helped me to do what I do now. What came next after the Tim Hortons? So Tim Hortons uh, got fired from Tim Hortons. Uh, man, another it was like a crazy. It was like a fire, like quit type of like I'm quitting. You're fired. All right, whatever. Um, okay. I, I was like, man, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I was looking for a whole bunch of jobs and then I ended up at Best Buy. So Best Buy was like a retail position, uh, yeah. you know, holiday thing. Like, okay, I'm just going to take it, get the discount. That's what I'm thinking. Get the discount, make a little money and, and call it a day. But when I got there, I ended up staying on. They kept me on. They made an offer for me to stay on. And um, I ended up going to this training class. And I got to give a shout out to my girl, Lolita Burgess, one of the best trainers you'll ever meet. I don't know what she's doing right now, but like, hopefully she'll tune in. But Lolita Burgess like ended up teaching me how to sell. We had a whole class where they teach you how to sell and how to help improve your salesmanship. And um, it it just blew my mind because I didn't know that I cared about sales. I had no clue, right? And all of a sudden, I'm knee deep in. She's teaching us, you know, how to make the offer and, and how to persuade and how to utilize the environment and, and finding common ground and all this stuff. And, uh, and then it just, it clicked for me and I turned into like a really, really strong salesperson there and started climbing the ladder and was probably a step or two away from becoming like the store manager. That was the next thing for me. I had, you know, moved up the ranks a few times and it was pretty cool, but, uh, it wasn't enough money, but <laughs> yeah. Do you mind sharing? How much do people at Best Buy make? Man, I was making eighteen, eighteen dollars an hour, okay. like between sixteen and eighteen, and that was for a supervisor, right? So okay. home theater supervisor with all the accolades, blah blah blah. And um, the next thing they were trying to offer me was I forget the next roll up, but it was like a, a dollar raise, and I'm like, yo, like I I can't do it, and uh, so yeah, I had the opportunity to go to another company, which is United Road, uh, United Road Sales, which was a transportation company, or stay here. One of my buddies who was at Best Buy left and went to this place, and he was killing it. He's like, yo, I just made like $10,000 off these sales. I'm like, yo, like, all right, like, say less. And so, uh, so I went over there and, and started that journey, too. Okay, how was that journey? It was tumultuous, but great. And like, it really kind of sharpened my skills when it came to like talking to people. Cause that was probably one of the first jobs I had where I had to like make straight up cold calls, like, like no matter what. And it was hard cause like learning the language of logistics and learning how people talk in that realm is like completely different than anything you've ever done. Cause you call, yeah. you don't know what you're talking about. He's like, uh, and they're just like, nope, pow, pow, like just hanging up the phone. And, um, I got my break though, because I was, this is, you know, a testament to those who are taking that alternative path. Like I just started thinking outside of the box, like, how do I get better? What can I do? And so I started tracking these large accounts that we had lost and I just started reaching out. Right? I started reaching out to them and sending emails or whatever the case. And uh, that got me in front of some people. And then I just went to my boss like two, three months in. I'm like, hey, they want me to come out to Las Vegas to close this deal. And he's like, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so, so I show him like, I got like six meetings, like no lie. I had like six meetings. Like, Hey, they said they want to meet with me. So, uh, he flies me out there like reluctantly, this rookie. And I go out there and I like close the deal. You know what I mean? Like I close the deal. And so he's like, Hey, you did a good job. Why don't you go to David Copperfield show on us? And so, yeah. uh, I walked down the strip and went to the David Copperfield show. But, uh, so yeah, it was so United Road was was cool. It was it was hard, man, because people would if you didn't deliver be vehicles on time. So it was a lot of you know, um, say for instance, Mercedes Benz say, hey, we got fifty cars we need to move from Detroit to Vegas. And if something happens to those cars while they're going there, you get cussed out. 
Like just yeah. it, that's it. Like you're you're getting yelled at. Your name is on the line, and so uh, that that was rough, and that that kind of led me into some contract work. So I stayed in logistic world for the next year or so, doing some contract work with a couple companies, and um, it just it burned me out, man. It, it was it was a straight burnout. Picking up that phone all the time, like I started getting anxiety because I'm like, man, I don't want to do this today. Uh, you know, cause it could go good. I mean, the money was, so the money's good. Let me say this in transportation logistics. Like I was making like, I don't know, 55, 60 base, but like my bonus was like, I could make whatever I wanted to make. You know, there was times I was making, you know, 10,000, 20,000 in that uh, specific season. So like, I mean, one year I was making 70 something thousand dollars. Right. Then it was like, and for me, that was good at the time. And then it was the next year it would go back down and the next year it'd go up to 80. So it was kind of a lot of that in between, but uh, a lot of area for growth just because it's that business that always, you always need cars. People got to get their they stuff. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So what happened after that? After United Road and after the um, contract work, I really been, this is when I really found my sweet spot or started finding it because I knew I had the ability to sell. I knew I had the ability to persuade people and, you know, utilize my, my charm and all that fun stuff. But I was like, man, I really want to use my gifts for something more meaningful. I want to use my talents for something that's, you know, can give me a reward. And um, that's when I, I reached out to one of my mentors. I told her about it and she's like, OK, you know, I told her what I wanted to do. And she texted me the next day. It's like, hey, you should consider working at this place called the Neutral Zone which is a, uh, a nonprofit after school program for kids in the area of Ann Arbor that's looking to come in and utilize their talents, you know, in art, music, uh, design. Like it's a really like very, very unique space for kids to just come and be themselves. And so it's like a uh, it's a teen center that's ran by teens, if you would. Okay. Uh, and so I went and looked at it and I applied for this role, which was the program manager of a program called the Future Core Program. And that was to transition young adults from 18 to 24 year olds into adulthood. So helping them understand, you know, time management, soft skills, you know, how to show up to an interview, all those kind of things. I would train them in that. And after we did our training, I would place them into different jobs, either internships with the city of Ann Arbor uh, or U of M, or, you know, just matriculate them into school, make sure they're, you know, getting their associate's degree and doing that kind of work. So, so yeah, I was there, man. And, and that was, that's when I really, it just all started making sense. I, I, I discovered my superpower, right. Which was, is to connect people to themselves and to opportunities um, and to find the things that other people can't see, right? Like, oh, I see that. It's e very easy for me. So able to bring those things together and things started to explode. Things took off there. I, I was able to build a couple cohorts and like uh, make some strategic partnerships and perform get some alliances going that are still going to this day. And once that happened, that's when Tech Elevator came a knocking. Um, they saw what I was doing in the community. They saw that work that was happening and like, Hey, we think you could be great, especially, you know, in the city of Detroit. Cause you know, for me, that's where I'm from. And they're like, yeah, we need somebody that, that knows the city, but that can like really extend power to places where power isn't. That's kind of why I took the job for tech elevator. And that's where I'm, where I'm at now. One thing that I want to like really go into. Yeah. When you found that thing that was like, yo, this is me. Like I connect, like, like, how did it feel? It felt free, man. Like it felt like I had found my lane. Like it, it was no more. I stopped looking at competition. And I stopped worrying about what everybody else was doing. Like everything just drowned out. And all I could see was like me. And I started to have this mindset. Like the only competition that I have is who I was yesterday. and. It just changed everything. You know, um, I think my, my anxiety went down significantly because I, I felt like I was no longer like performing. Um, you know, I was just being myself. I wasn't code switching anymore. <laughs> like I had just stopped the whole thing and moved into another place. So it was just like a, a state of calm, if you would. Yeah. And that that's so important because so many times we're told to choose this career. It's a good career. This is right for you. You make a lot of money, but very few times are we told like, hey, 
you're good at with this or you're good with people or you know what? You're a helper. Like, you know, everybody and you like uplifting people. Have you thought of going into this type of work? Mm -hmm. And it usually takes like a lot of jobs to figure out and do this. Whereas like, if you had found that earlier, it would have just clicked. Now, what did you feel was the hardest period of your life? Mm. Hardest period of my life was, was in between Best Buy and the next opportunity, which I think ended up being United Road, somewhere in between there. It was just tough, man. I had moved out of my parents' house, you know, like for the second time, like, <laughs> yeah. like, well, cause rewind, like I was actually married once before and got a divorce cause that just did not work. And so kind of like rebounded from that and then like ended up going back home, licking my wombs and then getting back out here, figuring it out. And I had this studio apartment that I, I just probably really wasn't ready for. My sister, like she was the one of the leasing agents there. She was like, I don't know if you're ready for this. I'm like, no, I got it. I got it. You know, so I sign up and I'm there, man. And like working at Best Buy, making decent money, paying my rent or whatever. But then like hours start getting cut at, at Best Buy and I wasn't making the money I was. So that led to me not being able to like pay stuff on time. So I no longer had internet in my home. I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to go down the hall to use the internet. I couldn't really buy a whole bunch of groceries, but was too embarrassed to tell my parents. So I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to tell him. I'm just going to do my thing. Uh, I had like a girlfriend who's now my wife, Victoria, like you girl, but you know, girlfriend at the time. And she's like, I don't know. She wanted me to do stuff. And I'm like, I'm broke. I can't hang out with you at all. Like, please leave me alone. Like, <laughs> so, And then on top of that, like my license was messed up at the time. Like, cause I had back then, like when I was young, I was so young and stupid. I would just get tickets and just throw them in the back seat, literally. Cause I had like, I had a Camaro for like years. I had this 92 Camaro it was a super sweet tr- car. And, uh, I was driving fast a lot. So I had a lot of tickets. And just kept throwing them away, throwing them away. They all cut up to me. And, uh, yeah, they, they took my license. So not only did I have a car that I couldn't drive at my apartment, I had to catch the bus to get to work every day. And then I had to walk a mile to get to the certain bus that I had to get to. And then at night, the other bus didn't run. So it would be like a two mile walk just to get back home. All to do it all over again and still not make enough money to pay my bills. So <laughs> it was very, it was a very depressing time in my life. And, uh, I don't know. I think about that place a lot. I actually drive past it just to like look at it sometimes. Like, oh man, Whew, I remember this. What are you most proud of? I'm probably most proud of, uh, closing. I saw I closed this really large deal, um, with Mercedes Benz when I was working at, uh, United Road and. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was crazy. So um, what happened was, you know, we were all in this board meeting and we were trying to like practice our calls or pitches or whatever the case. And um, somebody ended up, oh, I was like, hey, I found this number on Mercedes Benz website. I don't know who it leads to or whatever the case. And they're like, all right, well, who's going to call? I'm like, I'll do it. So I call and this guy named Mike answers the phone like and I'm like, hey, you know, what's up, Mike? And he's like, hey, what's up? I'm like, what's going on? And he's just kind of, he pauses. And he's like, oh, not much, man. Getting ready to take my kid down to Orlando. And he starts talking to me. I'm like, all right. So we just, I just went with it, you know, started talking about softball and all this other stuff. And then I told him like, hey, look, I'm calling, you know, from United Road. We, we're a carrier. We move cars all over the country. You probably heard of us, Blase Splee. And he's like, you know what, man, I'll, all right, I'm going to connect you with my guy. And so he connects me over to this guy and we start having this conversation and it ends up in like a multi-million dollar deal, like <laughs> off a whim, you know? And so like, that's, that's probably one of the things I'm most proud of because like, I didn't second guess myself in that moment. I didn't, you know, think outside of, oh, I didn't, it was no script. Like there was, it was just me talking. <laughs> like, And so uh, then I knew from that point on, I knew like, I can do anything. Like I can talk to anybody. I can, you know, anything can happen. So that that's uh, what I'll say. Now, this is going to be very interesting. If you saw your 18-year-old self walking across the street, what would you tell that Michael? I would tell that Michael to slow down. Like, yeah, like slow down um, and find out what you hate and find out what, like dig into what makes you angry. Like what what is that thing that makes you angry? Because if you can find out what makes you angry, you'll probably find your passion. 
And if you find your passion, then you'll find that area you're trying to go into a lot sooner. And I would tell them, like, don't get married the first time. Like, <laughs> I'll say that too. But no, no, seriousness, I would tell them to, you know, get emotional control soon as you can. You know, learn as much as you can about you. Because I know we, you know, the world tells us to go to school. The world tells us to, you know, do all this other stuff and, and follow these paths. But like, once you know yourself a certain level, like it becomes so much easier to say no, right? It, be, it becomes easy to be like, nope, that's not where I'm going. Like, because when you find you, you find the path and you start to say, okay, I want to go here. So like having a destination in mind is something I would tell my 18 year old self too, is like, where do you want to end up? Like, what do you want to see? out of yourself and you know what what's a, a picture you can paint so you can have somewhere to go towards yeah now what are your future goals now man future goals uh right now i want to really get off into strategic development more and business development because i think i'm really good at it that's something i discovered like within this last year or two is like i'm really good at you know finding pain points within companies and making strategic alliances and opening new doors and so uh, and, and bringing people together of like minds and ideas to form something great. So I really want to get into that area a lot more um, in my career. So hopefully I can do that with Tech Elevator. I think I can because they're growing at a rapid rate and uh, we're always looking to innovate. But that's one of my big things is going into that lane and, um, you know, opening some more doors for people. Can you tell us more about what Tech Elevator does? Like, like more of the programs, how does it work? Because it does a lot of interesting things and there are a lot of organizations popping up like Tech Elevator. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Tech Elevator is a coding intensive boot camp. Uh, we have a 14 week program and we have a 30 week program. And so basically the goal is you come in and we teach you how to be a software developer. I always say 98 days because that's 14 weeks. The program includes what we call a pathway program, which is really unique to the industry. What that's going to do is teach you all those skills that, you know, we take for granted, the soft skills of showing up and knowing ourselves and, and being um, ideally in a situation when you're trying to interview or whether that's learning how to network better or learning how to, as you would say, update your LinkedIn so that it looks good, right? And making sure that you can uh, represent yourself in the best way. So we teach you how to tell your story. And then at the end of the pathway program, the unique part is, we actually help you get a job. Like we have to. Uh, it's a part of our deal because we are audited by the Council of Integrity and Results Reporting. And so what that means is out of the 90 plus boot camps that are out there in the game right now, we're only one of three that actually sub submits our stuff to outside auditors to come in and look and verify our numbers. So right now we have a 93% graduation rate um, and an 88% placement rate where we're placing people you know, all over the country, different jobs, actually global, I should say, because we have almost a thousand hiring partners that we work with. So, so it's a very strong program. I mean, it's blowing up every single day, especially here in Detroit and some of the new market. Shout out to my new market leaders um, out there getting it done. Wow, that's amazing. And I'm so glad because there are a lot of boot camps that I know and some of them cost a lot of money. Yep. And I see some people, they're just not ready outside the boot camp. Like the boot camp is, yep. and they think like, hey, I'll be ready right after. And it's like, no, there's sometimes they don't have hiring partners or people get jobs, but you have to do a lot of networking and all that. So people need to understand these things because I redo a lot of resumes from boot camps. And I'm like, hey, they didn't even cover these things with you. Like it kind of sucks that you spent 10, 20 plus K and you're not getting this part, which it's an integral part, right? You yes. need to have like a good resume. You need to know how LinkedIn works. You need to understand all these things in order to get a good job. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And, we, and we do that, man. That, that's something I really, um, the reason why I worked here is because of that. Like, cause I started seeing like, Hey, they're not number one. We just not like saying, give me your money and get out. We're literally, we only have a 50% 50 acceptance rate because we want to make sure you're ready. So we're looking at your behavior. We're looking at your aptitude. Like, can you learn it? Right. Can we teach you how to learn? Because that's the goal is to teach you how to learn. But then also, are you like a person that can fit into a team? Because in tech, you're going to be working with people hand in hand, close, like close knit stuff. And so can you get along with everybody? And if, you know, if you can, then we probably can find you a job. And then, too, most people are we're changing their lives because it's affecting them in a generational way. You think about a barista making twenty five thousand dollars a year 
now they come through our program and you're immediately making 60 to 65,000. That's a pretty significant jump, right? And that's yeah. only your first year. So once you get into year two, three, four, I mean, you're over a hundred thousand, you're really cooking at that point and you can kind of go and do whatever you want to do. So, yeah. Wow. That, that's just absolutely amazing to see. Uh, and look, I used to be a barista, so I know. And I remember <laughs> and this was before the minimum wage. It was like, I made like seven seventy five. And they, you know, it's funny. They uh-huh. gave me an accidental raise, so oh. I started making eight seventy five. So let me tell what? you something. I started. I saw my first paycheck was eight seventy five. I was like, okay. And That's then the payroll person came, and they're like, oh, we forgot to give you your first check. It was like, you know, like five hours or something. Yeah. And I looked at that pay rate, and it was seven seventy five. So I was like, all right, let me see what my next paycheck is. Eight seventy five. <laughs> then I told the other coworker they've been working there like three, four years. <laughs> so they started seven seventy five. They're like at eight fifty because they got twenty five cents a year, and I'm like the new guy. <laughs> Make it no, you know what? Yeah, yeah eight seventy five. And then I went to like nine dollars the next time or something like that. That's nuts. And man. and yeah, I was I was so happy then. And then you know I was like in high school, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, you was, was, was get money then if you was making eight seventy five. Yeah, no, in high school, that was a lot of money. But, yeah. you know, I, I think about, you know, if you think about career, like a lot of my coworkers, mm-hmm. sometimes this was their, like, this was their job, right? And some of them had another job, right? And it's very tough. Like, high school, I didn't have any bills. But now if you got rent to pay, you got all that. Like, yeah. it's definitely something very tough. No, I, I really appreciate groups like Tech Elevator who are doing things to change people's lives. Yeah. Now, what advice would you give for just people who are younger, who are looking to pursue these careers? Like, what would you tell them? I would say learn. Learn as much as you can. That's the biggest thing right now is there's so many free things you can do before you get even to a place like Tech Elevator. You can do Udemy. Um, you can do free code camp. Um, if you just search, you know, coding for free, like you will find a ton of different um, sources that you can just do and start learning about it, but like immerse yourself in it. I think a lot of times we, we don't allow ourselves to get lost in things that we don't understand because we don't want to feel like a novice, but like, it's okay to not know what you're talking about. So jump in, you know, find those people that are actually in those industries that you want to be in or doing the job that you think is kind of cool and just start asking them questions, right? Like, yo, like, what do you do? How did you get here? Like, what did it take? Like, similar to what we're doing right now, right? But like, you know, asking those uh, those questions for specificity can help you to tailor your path a little bit differently versus just like, you know, going to school or whatever and, and just hoping that you land somewhere. You can actually design your life. And that's what I would say. Yeah, so many people don't realize that. You have a lot more control over your life. Maybe not in the short term. Short term, you got to kind of take care of things. But if you start taking the right steps and you start planning ahead, you'd be surprised at what happens two, three, four, five years from now. Like there are some clients I've worked with two, three years ago, and now they're making like 80K more. They're making a whole salary more than when they started, right? And they had a salary before. And that's the power if you do the right things. And look, it's okay to pay for things, but I always tell people, start, get started. Start with some of the free things make use of them. And then now when you do pay for something, you can take the most advantage of it because I see some people they are ready to pay. And I'm like, you don't even know the basics. Why are you going to pay someone to learn the basics? Basics learn for free. You want to pay someone for more direction, more clarity. Now, Mm -hmm. as we're wrapping up, is there any way that the audience can support you and can support Tech Elevator? And how would people find you? Yeah, uh, you could support me by, you know, pointing companies that are innovative, right, that are looking to take that tech talent and get it to uh, into their into their system because there's a big need for tech talent right now. There's a huge, huge gap. And so I'm trying to find these companies that are saying, hey, we want to change how we do stuff. We're not just looking for traditional CS students anymore. We want the best talent. And if that's what you have, we can offer that. Um, so I would say that. And then also like send people who are interested, right, who are like, hey, I, I want to, you know, consider taking some coding, right? Send those people to yeah. me. Um, the best way to find me right now is LinkedIn. Uh, if you if you're on LinkedIn, you know, you can find me, Michael Hill Jr. I'm I'm there doing my thing. If you don't want to find me on there or you're not on LinkedIn, you can also look on Instagram. I will open it. I promise. I don't open it as much as I used to because I'm trying not to be addicted anymore. But uh, you can find me on there. Same thing, Michael Hill Jr. Uh, at Michael Hill Jr. And uh, I'm on there as well. And for those of you who are not on LinkedIn, get on it. 
I'm <laughs> telling you, it's the number one way to get right. jobs. There's yeah. no reason not to. It, you're holding yourself back, especially in tech. Absolutely. I, I, I live by it now, man. So I'm, I'm learning from y'all. Thank you so much for your time. This was such a great episode. I love what you're doing. Keep on changing lives. Appreciate you. Growing in and knowing. Wisdom is flowing. If you didn't know, now you know where I'm going. If you didn't know.